Okay, three assessments down, two to go. I already feel myself running out of steam though. Man, I know I chose a career in social work because I love listening to people's stories and I'm good at it, but also like, did I really have to choose such an extroverted job when I know that my social battery lasts about as long as the battery of my iPhone 6? Okay, no, you know what? Now is not the time to be questioning my life decisions. I've got work to do. I can question myself on my lunch break and I'm gonna take my break alone today so I can recharge. That'll be my reward once I'm done these assessments. Some nice, quiet, alone time. Okay, I can do this. Next patient is in room 828. That's on the other end of the hall. I hope I don't run into anyone I have to make small talk on the way. Why can't invisibility cloaks be a real thing? If you're also an introvert with a job that requires you to be very social, maybe you also often feel drained and overwhelmed in the workplace just by the sheer overstimulation of that environment. When I was working as a hospital social worker, talking to at least 30, 40 people every day, I was questioning my life decisions every day. Why did I choose to be a social worker? when I am not a social person. The people aspect of that job was at the same time my favorite and my least favorite part of that job. Working with large groups of people and having very focused conversations with coworkers and patients, and then having to endure small talk between all of that, even if I was enjoying myself in some of these interactions was still exhausting. And I really had to adapt in that role and find ways to, increase my social endurance. And so in today's video, I want to share with you five things that I do as an introvert with an extroverted job to make work less overwhelming, more manageable, and most importantly, help me to have good mental health in the workplace. Let's get into it. The first thing I do is I make breaks a non-negotiable. When I first started working as a hospital social worker, I would feel guilty for taking breaks away from my desk. And I'm sure there are a lot of healthcare workers out there that can relate. There's this kind of unspoken expectation that we should just be available at all times. And so in the rare occasions that I did take a break away from my desk, first of all, I would never take my full hour break because how could I when there was so much work to be done? And also I would take my work phone with me and I would let my team know like, oh, I'm just going for a quick break, but I have my phone with me. Call me if you need anything. Don't do this, okay? Don't do what I did. Even if my phone didn't ring on my break, I would still be anticipating getting a call. And so I wasn't actually getting a true break. Obviously this was not a sustainable way of working for an introvert spending a full eight hours in nonstop interaction with people. And I was just going home every day feeling like a shell of a human. And I just got to a point where I just couldn't stand feeling that way anymore. And I knew I needed to make a change. And so I did the most basic thing that one could do. And I started taking my full breaks, phone free. Alone. Alone. Now, I know this might seem silly and obvious to some people, but I know there are some introverts out there who are also on the higher end of the workaholic spectrum, who can relate and who can also use this reminder to take your full break. And I experimented around with ways that I could take this break. So some days I would take my full hour in the middle of the day. Other days I would take a few shorter breaks spread out throughout my day. Some days I would go for a walk. Other days I would just find a quiet place to sit by myself and watch a YouTube video or mindlessly scroll on Instagram. Either way, I noticed that when I took my full hour break away from work and away from people to recharge and clear my mind, I felt like a different person. I felt like a better version of myself and I could actually do my job better. I was able to be more productive and more functional. And most importantly, when I started taking my full hour break, that's when I started to feel so much lighter and less overwhelmed and more in one piece at the end of the day. Alone time is like 
oxygen to introverts. It is a basic need. It's necessary for our survival. And so we should be taking our full hour break in our workday and we shouldn't be feeling guilty about it because we need to catch our breath. That is a non-negotiable. Something else that I did is to intentionally recharge outside of work. When I first started working as a hospital social worker, I would sometimes still hang out with people after work, but it was by hanging out with people after work that I learned that I actually can't do that. Like my body physically does not have the capacity to socialize after work, after a whole day of socializing at work. Whenever I did have plans in the evening, I felt like I didn't get enough time to recharge on my own before I had to go to work the next morning. And so the next day at work, my mood and my energy would not be great because I would only be operating at like 50% battery and I just, would not be having a good time. So I learned very quickly that how I spend my time after work has a huge impact on how I feel when I'm actually at work. And so I started making my evenings my intentional introvert recharge time. After work, I would go home and I would just not talk. I would not fake smile. I just rested my vocal cords and facial muscles. <laughs> and I would do some sort of activity to replenish my energy. Usually that would be working out or doing yoga. A lot of the times it was just going to bed early. <laughs> and on the weekends when I did have more social energy, that's when I would see people. I still reserved one day of the weekend to just not have any plans and not see anybody and that was glorious. But this is what I learned worked for me to be able to have the energy that I needed to be in this extroverted role at work. So for all my fellow introverts out there, I would highly recommend dedicating some time on your evenings and weekends to just have some quality alone time. And I guarantee you it's going to make a world of a difference in how you feel when you're at work. Another thing that I did was I worked with other people's communication styles. We all have that one coworker that we know if we go to them for one thing, they're gonna start talking to us about 27 other things. I know you have someone in mind. So I started really paying attention to the communication styles of the people that I worked with. Are they the type who will just get to the point, they'll give you a direct answer, or are they the type to go on tangents and give you a very non-clear indirect answer? And for these more tangential people, I try to avoid talking to them in person or on the phone if possible. And instead, I would just email them. That way I was still getting the information that I needed from them without having to expend a bunch of social energy trying to follow their tangents in the process. As introverts, sometimes a 15 minute conversation can feel like it took up two hours worth of our energy. And so we should be finding all the opportunities that we can to take advantage of online communication because that's gonna save us so much energy and our energy is limited and precious. The next thing I did is I leaned into my strengths. As introverts growing up, a lot of us were called shy or quiet and we were told to speak up more in class. And this made a lot of us feel like there was something wrong with us for being that way. And a lot of us felt pressure to be more social and extroverted. This was definitely me. I thought that being more introverted and quiet was a bad thing. And I so wish that I could be more outgoing and extroverted. And I was actually jealous of people that were extroverted because I just wanted to be like them. And so I really tried to force myself to be more social, especially in university, to try to fix my introversion. But this just, never felt like me. First of all, it was exhausting. And also it just didn't feel good trying to force myself to be someone that I'm not. But then one day I listened to a TED talk by Susan Cain called The Power of Introverts. This TED talk has 15 million views, which I think speaks to how many introverts and other people there are like us out there. We just don't know about them because they don't put themselves out there as much just like us. This TED talk was 
seriously life-changing. I encourage everyone, extrovert or introvert, to watch it because it really paints introverts in a different light than what we're used to. And Susan Cain really emphasizes how introverts actually have their own unique strengths that actually the world needs more of. And hearing this just completely shifted my self-image from seeing my introversion as a weakness to actually one of my greatest strengths. Introverts tend to be the best listeners and listening is such an undervalued skill. The ability to listen well and to truly absorb the information being communicated to you is critical if you want to have good relationships with your colleagues, which obviously would lead you to be successful and do well in your job. Introverts also tend to be really thoughtful and creative and we do our best work alone. We prefer to spend the time to work through problems on our own first because that's how we can do our most creative problem solving. And then when we do go back to the group and we do speak, whatever we end up saying, we had put a lot of thought into those words to make them as clear and compelling as possible. And so yes, while we might be on the more quiet side, when we do speak, you should probably listen up because it's probably gonna be something important and insightful. And Susan Cain talks about how all of these traits actually make introverts the best leaders because we listen to our teammates and are thoughtful about everyone's perspectives often we're highly respected and trusted in leadership roles. And obviously that leads to better outcomes for the team and what we're able to accomplish. And so at the hospital, whenever I started feeling bad about feeling like I wasn't social enough to be in this role, I would remind myself of the strengths that I do have as an introvert. And that these strengths are actually stifled when I'm trying to force myself to be social. And so instead, I allowed myself to do what I do best, which is to spend time on my own, doing my own thing first. And that's actually when I was able to do my best work and I was able to be the best communicator and leader that I could be, which then helped me to feel better about myself as an introvert. Another thing I did was to tailor my environment to me. The modern workplace was definitely not designed with introverts in mind. Like just the thought of an open concept office where anybody can come up to you and start talking to you at any time it just fills me with dread. Like just the thought makes me exhausted. And so I think as introverts, we should be exploring different options of work environments that would be better for us. So for example, can we ask our manager for a quiet space away from people to do our work? Or can we ask for some days where we work remotely instead? And while we're making this request, we can just make our case and explain, like, I do my best work when I'm given the time and space to work independently. And so I think this setup would be best for not only me, but also for the team. Luckily at the hospital, I already had my own office that I only shared with one other person. And it was amazing. It was like one of my favorite parts of that job to have that space to myself to hide if I needed to. <laughs> but sometimes even if we do get that quiet space to ourselves or we do get that remote work day, sometimes we might still not be feeling our best at work. And at this point, we should probably be asking ourselves if it's more of the nature of the job not being a good fit for us. Personally, at the hospital, even though I had my own personal space, I still found that role very draining and overwhelming for my introverted self. And so I did end up leaving and I found a role that is a much better fit for me. So I'm currently working as a therapist. I see most people virtually and so I get to do most of my work from home and it's mainly one-on-one -on -one interactions, which I know is my strength. I do much better one-on-one -on -one than in a meeting with a lot of people. And at the end of my workday as a therapist, I feel so much better than at the end of a workday as a hospital social worker. And it really is just a matter of it being a much better fit for my introvert personality and my introvert strengths. It's easy as an introvert to feel out of place in an extroverted world, but there is a place for all of us. We just have to find it. So those are my tips for all my fellow introverts with extroverted jobs 
jobs out there. I hope that this helps. And if you're an introvert with an extroverted job and you have more tips on how you get by at work, please share them with us in the comments. I know I could use some more pointers and I'm sure there are other introverts out there who could use them too. Introverts supporting introverts, love to see it. As always, I hope you're staying well and I will see you next time. Bye.